the world is moving towards a carbon-free future, and a part of that, of course, is electric vehicles. But is South Africa ready for the change? And what about electric taxis? Well, that could become a reality by the end of this year. Yes, you heard right. The University of Stellenbosch is partnering with Oxford University and several companies to test potential vehicles of that kind. For more on this, we're joined now by Professor Tinnis Boyson. He is the chair of the Internet of Things at the Faculty of Engineering at Stellenbosch University. And he leads the team testing these vehicles. Uh, uh, Professor Boyson, thank you so much for your time this evening. I can only imagine that your work that you're doing has made you the toast of dinner parties <laughs> uh, uh, where you live, <laughs> such as would be the fascination of people saying, yeah, electric vehicles are great, but it's really been seen up until now as an elitist thing, hasn't it? You fast forward to not just an electric vehicle, um, but an electric taxi. I mean, that's really something for the people, isn't it? Um, how far are we with this project of yours? Fill us in. Uh, good evening, and thanks very much for the opportunity. Uh, we've been working on this for a few years, actually, but um, wow. getting the vehicle here is what we're busy with right now. Um, the, all the work that we've done up to now, like I say, for a few years, have been using simulations, simulation models, uh, estimations and obviously as models go we had to make a few assumptions so one of the crucial features that us and our industry partners that's go metro mixed telematics and hsw are trying to do now is to be sure that we are well prepared for the onslaught that's coming because electric vehicles are coming there's no way to avoid that and like you say minibus taxis they are something that's been left behind in that regard, despite the fact that they're carrying 70% of the sub-Saharan populace every day. Um, so some of the questions that we want to answer is how efficient these things are, because mm. one of the big questions is environmentally speaking, does it even make sense to convert to electric vehicles for minibus taxis in South Africa, given that our electricity grid is mostly yeah. dependent on fossil fuels? So one of the things that we're trying to stand, understand is exactly what the efficiency rating of the car is, because everything hinges on that rating. And our simulation model uh, seems to indicate that it'll be a marginal impact. Uh, that's, that's an increasing impact on uh, carbon emissions. But fortunately, as you know, our grid is turning greener by the day as more and more solar and wind generation is added. Oh, well, the, if, if you look at the, our current news, uh, feasibility, uh, a, a large part of, of the question around feasibility is cost. I mean, uh, if you're saying, yeah. yes, it's not going to have that big of an impact, environmentally speaking, if I'm understanding you correctly, will it at least have a big impact on the cost of running a taxi as compared to the fuel that, that um, uh, we're paying uh, out of our noses for at the moment? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. So the one is the fuel and the other one is whether ESCOM is even able to sustain mm. the extra demand. But let's talk about the fuel quickly. The initial setup cost of these vehicles is quite high at the moment. Um, that's mostly because of import duties. So the uh, normal importation tax on vehicles is already quite high, but then electric vehicles are additionally taxed because they're seen as a luxury vehicle. So one of the things that we're also exploring with our partners, Go Metro, is to produce these vehicles locally. And I think that's really the crux of it. We need to prepare our local production to make them here, to bring down the cost, and then also to create jobs in the process. Because if we don't prepare, our outdated or rather our production facilities will become outdated as internal combustion engines are switched off and people move over to electric vehicles so producing locally is a key a key part of that question just to answer your question about cost real quick um the running cost of these vehicles is substantially less than for uh, combustion engines so our estimates show that it's less than 50 percent the running cost the initial capital cost as i said is about 20 percent more than what you would expect to pay uh, for a normal minibus taxi now maybe a bit more um, in terms of the escom grid that's actually something that we're also invest investigating is just seeing how we can leverage renewable energy and stationary battery storage to reduce the impact on ESCOM because all, mm. uh, all of us are very much aware that ESCOM can't even carry the burden as it is right now. So adding a layer of electric vehicles onto it is probably going to kill it unless yeah. we manage it well, schedule this, the, the charging and try to bring in as much as possible renewable energy.
Yeah, absolutely. I suppose the ESCOM question is an important one and is the one that probably gets all the giggles when people find out what you're, you're working on. Um, so perhaps we park that for now. If I had to put on my hat and let's say I'm a, a taxi driver or a taxi owner watching this right now, I suppose to the questions I'd be asking is so far in terms of your, the studies that you've done and the research you've done, what, uh, what are you seeing in terms of how often uh, this kind of vehicle would have to be charged? So in terms of how much time that would take out or take the vehicle off the road, because time is money, as with most things. Yeah. And also, how fast can this thing go? That's, yeah, these are very good questions. Thank you. So the one thing that we see is the vehicles that are currently available have a range of approximately 140 kilometers. Some of the taxis uh, require a range of about 200, maybe 250 kilometers uh, per day. So what you would need to do is split up the day into two and then ensure that the vehicle is charged during the middle of the day. And fortunately, that's also when solar power is available. So charging during the middle of the night when no one else is using electricity is a good start and then recharge during the middle of the day. The next question that you had is about the time that it takes to charge this vehicle. So that is completely dependent on the um, the kilowatts of the charger that you apply so our simulation show that if you work with a charger of 22 kilowatts more or less um, it should be sufficient to charge these vehicles to get them back on the road again before the evening peak starts um, so that should be perfectly fine uh, in terms of the what was the third question the that you speed. asked right now the speed oh, the at speed, which it can drive it. yes <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So these these vehicles are um, that they can accelerate pretty quickly getting off the ground. And um, there are some questions, and this is also something we're trying to understand still is to what extent they can go uphill. But I can tell you that Golden Arrow bus services here in, in Cape Town have tested quite a few uphills with their electric buses that they've bought. They're completely satisfied with it. And what I can also tell you is they've run two buses electrically and they're thinking of converting their whole fleet. So it's been a huge wow. success. In that front. The big challenge though is Golden Arrow Bus Services is one entity that's centralized. They've put in solar charging, so they've done it by the book, charging their buses from solar power. But now with minibus mm -hmm. taxis, as you know, it's a very complicated system. And then also it's a distributed system with many different owners. So these are the challenges we have to, to cater for. And I suppose the, a conversation around getting the buy-in from owners and drivers, that's a completely different conversation further down the line. One more question uh, before I let you go. I know that abroad, um, uh, what I want to know is what is the feasibility of what we can learn from um, other uh, cities around the world that have adopted uh, electrical taxis? I know in London, for instance, you've got a, a fleet of about 500, I think, uh, electric uh, mini cabs. Is it uh, feasible? Mm to make comparisons internationally or is it difficult to do so looking at what um, the minibus taxi in South Africa represents really and how its main job is transporting um, so many South Africans, millions of South Africans mm -hmm. from home and to work against the backdrop of people living in places as a result of the apartheid legacy of, of urban planning. Are we able to learn from other cities or is South Africa just uh, the too, um, too peculiar or um, uh, isolated in terms of its uh, very real um, lived realities? So appreciative of your good questions. Thanks very much. These are very informed questions. So what we have found actually is that the models that we used initially a year ago that were based on European driving styles are not adequate for our mm. local simulations at all. We have had to adopt them and we're actually still busy adopting them. And the main reasons are the driving style is completely different for the minibus taxi. So for a taxi in London, you have, uh, and, and for buses actually in Europe as well, you have set schedules uh, and you have a more controlled environment. In our environment, the minibus taxis stop frequently and they depart quickly again. And there's a, a rush to, to, to finish the, the trips um, and what the extent of that or the, the, the consequence of that is, is that all the stopping and starting has a very big impact on the en energy usage of the vehicle. So the bad news is we can't really use the models mm. from European countries, but the good news is it doesn't look too bad. And also it's not just South Africa, it's the whole of sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. And if you take it further, it's actually the whole of the global South uh, that have these type of informal transport sectors. So if we crack this, 
it's going to be good. And I can also tell you that um, the one thing that we can take from European countries is that this transformation to electric vehicles, it's like a tsunami. It's coming. And once it starts yeah. and once the penny drops, that it, it's more, uh, it, it makes monetary sense to do it. Mm. Uh, it will come in a big wave. Fantastic stuff. What fascinating work being done down there by you and your team. Thank you so much for sharing some of that with Thank us. You. And I'm sure we'll be in touch the further on you go with this project. That's Professor Tinas Boyson. He's the chair of the Internet of Things at the Faculty of Engineering at Stellenbosch uh, University. Stellenbosch University partnering with Oxford University and several companies testing a potential electric minibus taxi.